let's quickly solve this question now uh, we have the question on the screen now let's come to our solution so this is our solution okay here in this question number one we'll be looking at liabilities we'll be looking at liabilities the rule is that at any point in time the asset of the business must be equal to summation of capital and liability so if we are looking at liability our equation will change to be l equals to a minus what c subject of formula and here where we saw question number one where L is what we are looking for. A is uh, three hundred thousand, and uh, C is one ninety. C equals to one ninety thousand. So what is L? L equals to three hundred thousand minus one ninety thousand and L will equals to one hundred and ten thousand Nera. So here L is one hundred and ten thousand. Okay, question number two. We will, we are looking for A in question number two. So solution 2 looking for A therefore A is what capital plus liability that is the accounting equation capital plus liability where C we have what C is in the equation C is a 70 C is 70 70,000 and uh, L L is uh, 140,000 so A equals to 70,000 plus 140,000 and the uh, asset will be 40 Sorry, seventy plus one forty, and that is a seventy plus one one forty. That is a two ten thousand. So a is uh, 210 okay then 3 solution to question 3 what are we looking for in 3 we are looking for capital we we'll have A to be 130 and uh, R to be 50 so we are looking for capital so capital will become asset minus liability where A is uh, 130 and uh, L is 50 so C will now be C will now be equal to 130 minus 50 and C therefore will be what 80,000 so question 3 C is uh, 80,000 okay question 4 we will, we will be looking at uh, assets again solution to question 4 solution 4 4 asset equals to capital plus liability and here where C since we are looking for A our C is uh, 14,000 our L is 18,000 
C is 14,000 L is 18,000 therefore A is equal to uh, C plus L that is 14,000 plus 18,000 our A is 14,000 plus 18 that is a uh, 32,000 okay so number this is uh, 32 number 5 we'll be looking for capital in number 5 number 5 we'll be looking for capital so solution to question 5 let's have it let's have it somewhere here question 5 We are looking for capital. So C equals to A minus what? Minus L. Where A is a uh, fifteen thousand six fifty-four and uh, L is uh, four thousand five thirty-four. So A will become sorry so C is fifteen six five four that's fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty four minus four thousand five thirty four so fifteen thousand six five four minus Four thousand five three four. We have it as a uh, C equals to eleven thousand one twenty. Eleven thousand one hundred and twenty Nera. Eleven thousand one hundred and twenty Nera. So then question six question 6 so here is 11,120 question 6 we will be looking for liability where A is what A is four is uh, 4,000 and the uh, capital is what is uh, 3,000 so liability here is just a thousand but let's go and work it out but six liability is what we are looking for so liability equals to asset minus what capital where asset equals to 4,000 and the uh, capital equals to 3,000 so L equals to 4,000 minus what? 3,000 therefore L equals to 1,000 naira. so that is question on the accounting equation as question on accounting equation and uh, we'll, we'll be taking subsequent question more question in our question and answer I haven't concluded the uh, question on the uh, accounting equation it is necessary that we look at the golden principles that is the principle and practice of double entry you know that has been the basis of uh, of accounting now the principle states that the principle states that for every debit entry there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa 
what we mean here is that for every debit entry, a corresponding entry, credit entry must be made. And for every credit entry, there must be a corresponding debit entry as well. Now, this principle is the foundation of bookkeeping. It is the foundation of bookkeeping. And not only that, it is the foundation of bookkeeping. Experience has shown over the years that many students fail accounts due to lack of the in-depth knowledge of this principle. And this principle operates on the basis that every financial transaction, every financial transaction must have two aspects of transaction. It is practical to note that this principle is propounded, is recorded in favor of uh, an Italian, an Italian mathematician known as uh, Luca, Luca Paciolo, which he did that in the year 1494 did that in the year 1494 he has paved way for the uh for the the, the print for the accounting method so that principle became a what a very very key it became very very key to the report of financial uh, records financial re uh, preparation of financial accounting and uh, uh, financial records now, in applying this principle, the principle view that every transaction involves two parties. So the first thing we must do is we must identify the parties to every transaction. And since the parties, the two parties are, we must have the person that is receiving. A party must be a what? A party must be a receiver there must be a receiving party or a receiver and that receiver which are called that account a receiving receiving what a receiving account then you must have another party called the giver and that giver can also be called the giving account so that's the double entry principle recognizes that what there are two parties to what to every account transaction. As a result of that, we have the receiver and the giver. Now, when we'll be recording the transactions on double entry principle, it will be good for us enough to understand the principle of posting toward to ledger using the double entry principle the first which we must do is that we must recognize the transactions which I've stated earlier on that that uh, transactions in account are classified into two the cash transactions and the credit transactions transactions they are classified into two we have the cash transactions and the credit transactions now the cash transactions must pass through what we call the cash book and the final journey is what is ledger and the credit transactions must pass through what we call day books and the final destination is also what is also ledger ledger is known as the principal book ledger is known as what the principal books the principal book of accounts and uh, your cash book and your day books we know them as what as the subsidiary books of accounts we will get there just take note of that 
so in recording the double entry principle we must know the giver and we must know the what the receiver irrespective of what transaction it is is it cash transaction or credit word transaction irrespective of it we must be able to identify who is the giver and who is the receiving party okay so irrespective of the transaction the double entry principle must be adhered to there must be a giver and there must be a receiver let's look at the following steps in recording transaction in a double entry form although we've got a ledger a T account must be open and what is an account an account is simply a ledger so an account is a record that is kept for each classes of asset income liability expenses in a permanent form so an account is or what is a ledger the right hand side is known as the what is known as the credit side and the left hand side is known as what is known as the debit side so each account is divided into two halves the left side is known as the debit the right hand side is known as what the credit and let's look at this summary then after you have established the two accounts involved we must now post it into the what into the into the accounts that are open for the two accounts you have identified the shortcut is this every given account must be credited that is must be on the right hand side the posting must be on the right hand side and every receiving account must be what must be debited the posting will be on the debit side that is on the left hand side therefore let's just have this summary which must be memorized for example this is an account this is the credit side as we said so this is the credit side so any posting done on the credit side is known as a what a credit entry but what does a credit entry indicate credit entry represents what does it represent and what does a debit a debit entry represents let's do it in what let's do it in one by one a debit entry indicates one indicate an increase an increase in the value in the value of assets a credit entry to an asset means it is a decrease in the value of assets let's look at liability because these are the these are the elements of account two in the case of liability a debit entry indicates a decrease 
in the case of liability the debit entry is a signal for decrease in in the value or in the amount of liability indicate decrease in the amount of liability so for liabilities a credit entry indicates an increase in the amount of liabilities so let's look at expenses 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 what does a debit entry mean to an expenses it means it means an increase in the amount of expenses and here it means a decrease in the amount in the amount of expenses so let's see for income a debit entry to an income account means that uh, means that there is a decrease it means a what a decrease in the amount of income whereas a credit entry in income a credit entry in income means an increase in the amount of income so that is the summary of transactions on debit entry and uh, credit entry